The Occupy movement grew suddenly and sustained longer than was first imagined. But now that the Occupy movement is shutting down for the winter, what will it be remembered for? One of their main rallying cries is, we are the 99%. It's a reference to this fact. Taking the entire population of the U.S., you'll find that merely 1% or nearly 50% of all our wealth. And with wealth comes power. And more wealth. In fact, you'll see that the wealthiest 1% of Americans over the last 40 years have grown increasingly wealthier and wealthier, while the remaining 99% stay relatively stagnant. And while the 1% have been gaining more power, they haven't always used it for the good of society. Okay then, regardless if you see this as a problem or not, what remains confusing for some people and plain frustrating to others is that nobody knows what occupiers really want. Even the occupiers themselves seem to have different reasons for occupying, making people think that they're just being immature. Movements should have a very clear goal, like, let's elect this president, or let's create these new laws, but the Occupy movement is different. It seems to be saying things like, let's pay attention to this issue, let's have a conversation, let's listen to each other, especially the marginalized, and see how we can agree. It doesn't have one charismatic leader, but is decentralized. It doesn't have one plain agenda, but thousands and thousands of voices connecting together. It is much like the difference between a typical model of top-down power and the way the internet works. So it seems that Occupy Wall Street is an internet era movement. You see, what most people don't understand is that Occupy Wall Street is not acting like 20th century politics, but instead it seems to be prototyping something new. And we will continue to see how it evolves.